Hi guys, uh, today we're going to take a look at Oramond Catacombs uh, for a level 400 plus Paladin. So I have a couple of sets of results for you here on the side. One of those is from level 402. This was around one of the first times I visited uh, Oramond Catacombs. And at that point, I didn't yet even have charms on everything. I believe I had Grim Reaper charm and that was about it. Maybe Hellspawn as well, but I didn't have Dark Torturer at the time. And I was able to get about 3.8kk raw experience and you can see my praise, i.e. no praise. And um, the equipment that I used. And on the right hand side, a little bit further, you can see my results from level 475. So at this level, you can see I have, you know, much better equipment as well. I have the Alicorn items and the Soul Stalkers. And also I had full charms everywhere. And obviously I was a little bit stronger and I was able to get about 4.5 KK raw experience uh, with no, no combat praise. Uh, so obviously this place scales quite well. I think this place scales all the way up to around 5kk raw solo around level maybe 550. I would think that's what that's what my expectation would be. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, for a starting level of 400, like you can see, I give it an experience of about 3.8kk raw that you can experience, which you can expect. Which is about 5.7 on 150 and uh, probably around 800k profit per hour. Now this will vary. A lot of these monsters have some relatively rare. Uh, oh, you know, you know what? I got something wrong. Actually, I just realised. I assumed it was a 15 minute analyzer, but it's a 30 minute analyzer, so it's going to be a lot less at level 400. Right? It's going to be more like 500k per hour. But as you can see already at 475, when my pace uh, increased and I and I wasn't using as many supplies, the profit per hour was going much higher. Right? I was on over over 1kk per hour rate here at level 475 so it does it does scale very well but at level 400 you're probably looking at yeah maybe four to uh four to 500k profit per hour which is still just still very good uh difficulty i give it about a 7 out of 10 when you first get here maybe maybe even an 8 out of 10 maybe let's change that a little bit uh, 8 out of 10 at 400 uh, i mean these monsters do hurt a lot they have a lot of damage uh, you don't yet have that much damage, so it takes a while to kill all of them. Maybe about an 8 out of 10, uh, but by level 475, again, it, it was pretty easy. I mean, I was in no danger of dying at all, so it, it gets a lot easier with time. Uh, for Beast Cherry, uh, our, it's probably going to be about 12 hours for DTs, 10 hours for Grim Reapers, 4 hours for Destroyers, and 3 hours for Hellspawn. Moving on, you need level 400+, plus. you will need to have cast 50 Oramond votes to have access to this dungeon. And this place can be effectively hunted by basically everybody outside of the druid sorcerers. Uh, a mage, so probably going to be pretty awful here, so I would not recommend. Uh, one thing I will mention is that the Paladin EK duo is very, very, very good in this respawn. It's probably one of the best experiences you can get in like a Paladin EK duo. I have a video from that from my Paladin from when he was like level 300-ish, uh, and it's very good. I... I very much recommend that. Um, very, very strong. Great experience for both EK and Paladin. I recommend all standard imbuements. No protection imbuements as necessary. And for damage breakdown, as you can see, basically just focus on your physical protection. It's over 90% physical protection. It's all you really need. Uh, make sure to keep a prismatic ring handy for big pulls. You know, if you're trapped by like seven dark torturers and a destroyer or something, you probably want to preemptively pop that prismatic ring on uh, as it does get very difficult at level 400. Uh, supplies per hour about you know you, you, you're probably going to be doing about 30 minute refills so you can halve that uh but yeah about 1600 grit minus per hour you probably want about 100 ultimates 1600 diamond arrows 700 avalanches and you'll want your six balls eye potions per hour as well for charms on the dark torture you'll want divine wrath or freeze ideally you want the divine wrath that's so that you can then apply freeze on destroyer because freeze is much better on destroyer if you don't have Divine Wrath, apply the Freeze on the Dark Torturer and then just apply something else on the Destroyer. It's more important for the best charm available to be on Dark Torturer, but they have both Divine Wrath and Freeze. There's both 110% on Dark Torturer, so it's better to use the Divine Wrath if you have both. For Grim Reaper, you know, they have low health, high damage, so something like Low Blow or Parry will be good. If you're really struggling, Dodge will also be okay. And you probably want Curse on Hellspawn or anything else that you have left over. It's not that important on Hellspawn. Uh, for the wheel, definitely recommend T1 Gift at around level 400 when you start. It's very difficult. You definitely want it. Uh, as it gets easy, I think T1 Grenade is going to overtake. Uh, I, I was using that at 475. That probably helped a bit with the experience, as rate, uh, experience rate as well. 
and it helps blow up those boxes towards the end so that the dark torturers don't run away as much. Um, and yeah, and the character you'll see in the video is level 422 distance skill and 33 magic level. No combat praise and no charms. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the route. So obviously you come in through here um, and the first pull really is going to be in this room here. So you do this pull. Oh, and yeah, I guess I should mention that I hunt west plus mid. So this is the, um, we're going to be hunting west and mid. That's what it's called. If west only is taken, you can hunt west, uh, mid and east as well. Uh, it's a little bit worse. There's a little, there's a fewer monsters in east over west. Uh, so ideally you want to hunt west plus mid. Anyway, let's, uh, let's restart. So like I said, you, you're going to do your first pull here. Then you're going to go up in this, this room. You're going to do your pull here. Then you're going to go run to the west and do your first pull here. And then you're going to go up and do another pull here. At level 400, it's definitely too many monsters in this room. I definitely do not recommend just running in and doing a massive 20 monster pull on level 400. Because you're probably going to die. Um, yeah, I, I, at the very least, you need to kite. You definitely don't want to be standing in a box around 20 monsters. I usually just split it into two pulls in this room. At this point, you want to run to this room from here. So you basically want to you know, run all the way back here. You're going to want to pick up the monsters from this room. Probably two or three will have respawned by now, or maybe even more. So you're going to get those and run through the corridor and do a nice big pull in this room. Once you're done, you want to start running and kiting and taking everything with you. Usually somewhere up till here and finish off killing the monsters here. At this point, you want to do two or three pulls in mid. This is basically mid. This big, big room is mid. You probably want to do two or three pulls in here. So usually I'll go and I'll... I'll do like the first pull somewhere, you know, so sort of this section, then I'll usually go a bit up and usually do a second pull somewhere around here. And then I'll usually sort of weave in and out, pick up a bit, a few more monsters, usually finish off with a third pull just before the corridor here. And then I go to the left and I restart and I do this pull. So as you can see, you know, there's what, how many pulls? We have one pull here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine so I have about nine pulls total uh it takes i think like almost 10 minutes to do a whole lap at level 400 uh because it's pretty uh pretty tough because they have a lot of health and you don't have that much damage yet um and it, i think it's worthwhile to mention that you kind of re you know a lot of people do these two rooms when you team hunt you probably want to do these two room rooms because there won't be enough respawn rate otherwise but when you're hunting solo those two rooms aren't that good much better to skip them and do it the way I've just shown you West and Mid. And same goes for these rooms. Uh, they aren't very good. Uh, if you're team hunting, you know, someone can pull out two rooms at the same time and then it's okay. But when you're doing it solo, it's not really worth it. So this is this is the route I recommend for Ormond Catacomb solo. Uh, yeah, and I think that's what I have for you today, guys. I guess maybe one last thing worth mentioning if you don't have your... Uh, grizzly Adams tasks remember that destroyers uh, they are a grizzly Adams task so you can always contribute to those uh, yeah that's what I have for you today guys I think it's a it's a pretty great spot overall I mean I definitely enjoy hunting here uh, yeah and the scales pretty well as well so you can you can be going here all the way up to like level 600 and you know it's going to be fine and good profit as well okay that's what I have for you today guys I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll, I'll play you the actual hunting video now and I'll see you in the next one bye bye